Hey, what's up, guys? All right, check it out. So I tried to do this. Uh, I tried to do this podcast episode uh, on my computer, and uh, man, it did not work, my friends, at all. So we're gonna do this again on here, guys. Welcome to the. Hey, let me turn this down. Hang on, sorry, guys. Uh, welcome to the Infinite Cosmos, featuring to no I'm, yeah, featuring to no avail astronomy podcast, the Cosmic Journey, where we delve into the mysteries of the universe and explore the uncharted territories of human curiosity. I'm your host, <coughs> Joey to no avail Shani, and my trusted companion, Linky, Linky the badass dog and not. <coughs> Today we're embarking on a captivating adventure, one that has ignited the imaginations of people around the world. Uh, I'm not really going to get into this as far as it be like, uh, I don't really care for the, I mean the alien, alien thing, but on this one, this is more, um, that's, it's the podcast Unraveling the truth about aliens, UFOs, and conspiracy theories. Now, this is not necessarily an episode that I'm going to, like... It's more or less how it has, like, uh, kind of captivated our uh, our uh, pop culture. Just, I mean, and just as really... I don't know. It's... it's uh, please, if you guys... Uh, I love it when you guys comment... Uh, call in anything um but uh i've got a couple other topics to do uh too that i would love to go over to more astronomy stuff but this is what i did put together uh now the episode unraveling the truth about aliens ufos and conspiracy theories and uh, i'm briefly going to introduce the topic and the widespread fascination um you know what i mean it's a topic that's permeated our culture, infiltrating our movies, literature, and late-night conversations. The mere mention of it can spark excitement, wonder, uh, and sometimes a hint of skepticism. You know, I mean, it pretty much it's it, it's the way it's really done everything. Really, I mean, uh, I know. Hey, <laughs> Thank you. Is that for Lincoln? Is that for Lincoln? You guys are so nice. Thank you. Oh, man. Ah, ah, you just wait for it. <laughs> you bastards. Anyway, you guys hit that. What's up, Mike Lynn? You can please hit like if you, uh, if it's something you like, and, uh, please leave comments and, you know. I love uh, or call in. I love hearing from you guys. So, yeah, I mean, we're lifting the veil in the world of the aliens, UFOs, and the intricate tapestry of the conspiracy theories that surround them. Uh, you know, from the from the eerie glow of unidentified lights in the night sky to the hushed whispers of the government cover-ups. The allure of extra testicle life <laughs> has captivated humanity for generations. Today, we're not just exploring the sightings and the encounters. We're unraveling the truth, examining the most compelling evidence, and asking the age-old question, are we alone in the universe? Something everybody wants to know, you know. But, but, but you know, it just gets like to be an old topic so I'm I'm gonna change it around a little bit see if I can't make it a little interesting you guys let me know hit follow I mean hit like if you like um and man comment you guys want me to talk uh, I've got a million other ones but this is a I'm just, I'm keep going thank you guys for joining I appreciate it so What is the prospect of alien life that fascinates us so deeply? Is it the possibility of intelligent beings from distant galaxies visiting humble abode, you know, to, or does it tap into our collective desires for something beyond the confines of our terrestrial existence? 
um, you know, join us as we navigate through the realms of a conspiracy and cosmic mystery, separating fact from fiction, and perhaps discovering the truth that's stranger than fiction itself. I mean, that's the truth. God really cannot make shit up. <laughs> This is the Infinite Cosmos featuring to no avail astronomy podcast and today we're embarking on a journey into the unknown. So fasten your seatbelts, open your minds and let's unravel the truth together guys. The history of UFO sightings. So we're going to go over early accounts and discuss how perceptions and interpretations have evolved over the time. I mean a lot of these have been things that have happened so long ago you know. And so much of this stuff is now being, you know, it's still being made up. So, how much of it is true? You know what I'm saying? I mean, let's check it out. Throughout history, there have been numerous accounts of UFO sightings. While many of these sightings can be explained by natural phenomena, military aircraft or other terrestrial causes, some remain unexplained and have fueled speculation. Uh... You know, and intrigue. Here, here are a few historical his, nah, historical accounts. God, I cannot talk. I cannot talk at all, right? Uh, okay, man. Like, all right, this goes back, and you remember, yeah, those those old those old dudes man, from World War Two. Uh, you know, they tell they that you you go ask them, man. They talked about these things called Foo Fighters. And not just not the band, it's a badass band name. Which I'm just gonna say, uh man, I really I think that Dave Girl he should have just hung it up a tail guys. But man, that's another subject. Uh but yeah, dude, no. The yes, those old they 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 were these fighter pilots in World War Two, dude. They saw all kinds of shit. Like uh they called these these things foo fighters during the night during the forties. During World War Two, Allied and Axis pilots reported sightings of mis- mysterious glowing objects that seemed to follow or accompany their ac- their aircraft. You know, these objects, dubbed Foo Fighters, exhibited unusual flight characteristics that were often described as glowing orbs. And yeah, dude, these old dudes, these fighter men, I've I've had these guys tell me about that, and then a lot of them saw these things. You know, and of course, uh, you know, the, the, the next early account, um, of course, the Roswell UFO incident in 1947, everyone knows about that, the Roswell incident is perhaps, but I'm going to get into more detail of it, uh, but the Roswell incident is perhaps the most famous UFO uh, related event. In 1947, a rancher near Roswell, New Mexico, reported the discovery of debris that some believed to be a crash UFO. The U.S. military initially stated that it was weather ballooned. But conspiracy theories persist. I mean, dude, now that, 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 that was a pigeon. The gun, I mean, the government really fucking bombed on that one, man. Yeah, sorry. And then three, you had uh, the Kenneth Ar- the Kenneth Arnold sighting in 1947. Kenneth Arnold sighting in consi- uh, is considered the catalyst for the modern UFO craze. Really, in June of 1947, Arnold reported seeing nine saucer-like objects flying in formation near Mount Rainier in Washington State. His account popularized the term flying saucer. Yeah, I used to live in Seattle. And I would drive to uh, Renton every day to, to work. And man, Mount Rainier was in my view every morning. And man, that mountain is truly alive. Like it's it's pretty amazing. Mount Rainier is like a it's its own like entity in itself. It's it's freaking beautiful. But man, there's clouds that are around. It looks like UFOs are around it all the time anyway. But man, it's a beautiful mountain. Uh, but I could see all kinds of man. Yeah, why you know. Uh, if there's UFO stuff, man, I guarantee you that's where it is. Then you had the Washington, D.C. UFO incident in 1952. In, uh, in July 1952, multiple UFO sightings occurred over Washington, D.C. Radar operators and pilots reported unidentified blips 
and flying objects, the U.S. Air Force attributed the sightings to, uh, to temperature inversions. Um, but the incident remains a topic of interest, you know. Then you have number five, man. You have the Betty and Barney Hill abduction in 1961. That's a huge one, man. That is a huge one. I, I don't know why that one is so uh, knocked out by... I mean, the Betty and Barney Hill claimed to have been abducted by aliens in 1961 while driving through New Hampshire. Their account included missing time, medical examinations, and vivid recollections under hypnosis. Now, this case is one of the first widely publicized claims of an alien abduction. I mean, that was a big one as well, you know. Uh, then the Kecksburg UFO incident in 1965. See, these are all in the 60s. I mean, I've got there some not. But in December of 1965, residents in Kecksburg, Pennsylvania, reported a fireball in the sky that has supposedly crashed in the nearby woods. Witness described an acorn-shaped object with strange markings. The official explanation was a meteorite. The speculations persist. Then the Phoenix Lights in 1997. Now, Stephen Greer, if you've ever seen what Stephen Greer does, I, I mean, I, I, some people think he's calling, you know, some people say he's calling demons, but he's supposedly calling aliens and being friends with them and, and you know, all that stuff, which I think is cool, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, he, uh, Oh, you know, he he's kind of got, I don't know, he he said that he was his uh, little uh, whatever. He said that they caused the Phoenix Lights. Uh, now, that was on March 13th, 1997, and that was thousands of people. You know, thousands of people. Yeah, that was that one in Arizona, man, uh, where, where it was reported seeing a formation of lights in the night sky. The lights appeared in a V-shaped pattern. They were visible for an extended, you know, extended period, not just for a little bit. And the U.S. military, of course, later attrib attributed the lights to flares dropped during a, a training exercise. But some aspects of these sightings remain unexplained. Either. You know what? Listen, government people. Uh, listen, if 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 you didn't make it look like you weren't hiding something, I don't think people would give a shit as much. But you, when you do that, I mean, I, that's what you, I mean, you're, you're making it sound, I mean, you're making it weird. <laughs> and then you get on to people fucking for, like, noticing your fucking weirdness. Like, stop, like, <laughs> oh, damn, it's so backwards, it's so fucked up. You weren't fucking doing, making it look weird, nobody would, <laughs> Hello, government. It was not a fucking weather balloon, dude. <laughs> then, like, Tic Tac, then, yeah, then, then you had the Tic Tac UFO incident. Man, Jesus, that was, I mean, man, then it's, it's gotta make us sound like fucking idiots, you know? It looked like big old Tic Tac. I mean, dude, but, you know, I, but that's what they saw. And that was it in 2004. In 2004, U.S. Navy pilots encountered unidentified aerial objects off the coast of California. The objects, nicknamed Tic Tacs, due to their shape, were observed performing maneuvers that defied known aerodynamic capabilities. The video footage of the encounters was just, was declassified in, in 2017. I mean, dude. Yeah, I mean... You guys know what it is. Come on, man. The military knows what the fuck it is. It's, it's come on, like, stop making us look like idiots. Hey. Oh. Shh. No, no. There's, there's not. Damn it. Okay. What? 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 Huh? What? Oh, sorry. Shush. Huh?
so fucking obviously stupid we wouldn't look that way anyway whatever so uh now that tic-tac-toe thing I can't imagine what the fuck you know and even I'm sure that they were like whatever man hey listen I'm just going over some just going over some facts just to get to the the point the 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 meat and potatoes of the story. Uh, you guys still there? Am I boring you? <clears throat> uh, no. It's important to approach the historical UFO sightings with a critical mindset considering alternative explanations and the limitations of eyewitness testimony i mean while these accounts uh, contribute to the cultural fascination with ufos many have uh, debunked and remained unresolved but then then you get uh, in deeper then you then in the roswell ufo incident in 1947 has been the subject for numerous conspiracy theories with some claiming that the U.S. government covered up the recovery in extraterrestrial debris and possibly alien bodies. While many of these conspiracy theories lack strong evidence, some proponents point to the declassified uh, gov government documents to support their claims. It's crucial to note that the official explanation from the U.S. military was that the debris came from a declassified project known as Mogul, which involved high-altitude balloons carrying sensitive <laughs> listening devices. <laughs> Come on. Here's some conspiracy theories surrounding the Roswell incident that, that, uh, that reference declassified government documents. The Project Mogul cover-up. The official explanation from the debris recovered near Roswell was Project Mogul a top-secret program aimed at detecting Soviet nuclear tests using high-altitude balloons. <laughs> Some conspiracy theories argued this explanation was a cover-up for the recovery of extra testicle materials and going to their mom's house. Hiroshima, then, then, too, the, then you had the Hiroshima bombing connection. Another excuse of to use something for a conspiracy. Some conspiracy theories suggest a connection between the Roswell incident and the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Proponents claim that the recovered materials have related to advanced technology, potentially recovered, uh, connected to nuclear weapons development. I mean, if you remember that, too. I mean, it's like... You forget about some of these things that they did, and it's like God. It just makes it just makes it worse. It really does. Then three, you had the Majestic Twelve, the MJ Twelve documents. That was a big one too. That was the conspiracy theories often referred to a line, alleged documents known as the Majestic 12, MJ-12 uh, papers, which supposedly provide evidence of a secret governmental uh, organization formed to investigate and manage extra testicle matters. Some claim that there are documents linked to the Roswell incident through government cover-ups. And then the witness testimonies, being at your mom's house, that's another one, uh, the UFO enthusiast, Point to witness testimonies from military personnel and civilians being at your mom's house who claim to have seen your mom or handled a debris that, that had that did not that matched the characteristics of your mom 
and the conventional materials, so these testimonies often cited on conspiracy theories suggest your mom was more extraordinary explanations for the Roswell incident. And I'm pleased to know I'm just kidding about your mom. Uh, yeah, no, she, she liked me. It's cool. Change in official statements. Another one, critical of the official mogul explanation, highlighted changes in the U.S. military statements over the years. I mean, man, some argue that these inconsistencies and alterations indicate an internet, an in, intentional effort to conceal the true nature of the Roswell incident. Of course, the Roswell incident, so, I don't know. I only put it in here because it's just such a pronounced... You know, I mean, that's the first thing everybody thinks about. Where's Roswell? Then you have reverse engineering, extra testicle technology. This is another one. Some conspiracy theories go further, suggesting that the U.S. government not only recovered extra testicle materials, but also engaged in reverse engineering to develop advanced technologies. Now, the alleged secrecy surrounding these technological advancements it's often cited as evidence of a government cover-up as always i mean it's really kind of uh you know like i said i'm only putting these in here as, as examples because they are they are the biggest examples but it's important to approach these conspiracy theories with skepticism um, and critically evaluate the available evidence. The majority of mainstream scholars and research consider the Roswell incident to be a, com a combination of mis bleh, misidentification, secrecy sa surrounding classified projects, and the cultural climate of the time rather than the evidence of extratesticle visitations. The classified documents that your mom's related to Project Mogul do provided an alternative explanation for the debris recovered at your mom's house in that in near Roswell. So, I mean, you really gotta take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm trust me, I'm gonna be getting over this with stuff. Are you bored? No, nope, no, don't get bored. So, witnesses, uh, witness ex explanations of the debris from the Roswell incident varied. The different individuals provided different accounts. It's important to note that many of these witnesses' testimonies are controversial and interpretations of events have evolved over time. Here are some witnesses explaining the debris. You had Mac Brazel, the rancher. Mac Brazel, the rancher, who discovered the debris, initially described it as unusual and unlike anything I've ever seen before. Uh, according to the account, the debris consisted of metallic-looking uh, fragment foils, some pieces of lightweight materials, some shit scattered across the goddamn field. It was fucked up. Um, uh, is that it? Yeah, that, that was in the, that. Yeah, in the whole kind of wide area. Well, uh, that was Mac Brazil. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I think it was the one you wait till I get to the other voices, okay? <laughs> oh, man, how else am I going to do it? All right, then you had W.W. Mac Brazil Jr., son of Mac Brazil. Watch out now, okay? Now, Mac Brazil Jr. stated uh, that the debris uh, uh, had memory uh, property. Yeah, yeah, it, it, meaning that it could be crumbled uh, or folded and, and would return to its original shape. It's like that. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. Uh, now, now the description, it was, I would just say it was like foil. It just went and then you could throw it and it just, it's like if you stuck it down there and then it bit it. Well, that's, okay, well, this description fueled speculation about the exotic nature of the materials. Well, man, thank you, son of Brad Magrath. <laughs> hey, I thought that was okay. Hey, I'm, I'm getting not bad voices. Now, then you had Sheriff George Wilcox. Now, Sheriff George Wilcox, who was involved in the initial response to Brazil's report, now he described debris as nothing made on this earth. I tell you, there's nothing. I ain't never seen nothing like this on earth. Nope. 
it was just gonna it was beep oh, oh man. I mean and the beep and it was like oh, man. I mean I can't I mean, I mean, I mean, no I am really was it and that yeah oh yeah not fun. I went up to sheriff it was no yeah I mean wow nothing made of this hurts I tell you well, the statement contributed to the idea that the debris was extraterrestrial in, in origin. It was nothing. What? Well, thank you, Sheriff George Scott Wilcox. Man, we definitely believe you with the, with that kind of voice. <laughs> hey, I still got a couple more. I still got a couple more witnesses, man. We're not done yet. God. Then Major Jesse uh, Marcel, he was uh, he was a military officer. Major Jesse Marcel, an intelligence officer at Roswell Army uh, Mayfield, played a central role in the recovery of the debris. So he was pretty, you know. He initially described the materials. Man, it was nuts. No, I don't, I don't even know. So I'm, 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 I'm uh, uh, it was not of this world. They, they claim they exhibited unique properties like. Marcel, hey, he posted famous photography on the debris, showing him that fragments of, of what appeared to be oil. That's what it looked like. Well, thank you, uh, Major. Wow, okay. So, you know, uh, foil, that's, I mean, that's, everybody's heard that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Then we had Colonial William Blanchard. Now, he was a base commander. Now, yeah, how could you not you know, take him? Now, Col Col Colonial William Blanchard, the base commander at Roswell, he initiated, uh, initially issued a press release announcing the recovery. It was a flying disc, I, I tell you. I got a flying disc. Now, this press release was quickly uh, retracted by a higher authorities who claimed that the debris was from a weather balloon. That... That, that was a pigeon. Um, and that would thank you, uh, Blanchard. I believe you. Yes, I do. And then you had Glenn Dennis, the mortician. Now don't, now, Glenn Dennis claimed to have spoken with a nurse at the Roswell base who described alien bodies being autopsied. Okay, this was mentioned. While this account is not related to the debris, it adds another layer to the conspiracy theory surrounding the Roswell incident. Now, it's crucial to approach these witnesses' accounts with caution. I thought their voices sounded pretty real. I mean, sounded convincing to me. Considering factors such as the passage of time, uh, potential misinformation, and evolving nature of the Roswell narrative, the official explanation from the U.S. military attributes the debris to Project Mogul, a top-secret program involving high-altitude balloons and listening devices. However, the Roswell incident continues to be in a subject of speculation and debate within the UFO and conspiracy theory community. So, now you have, of course, now... Now, the Majestic 12 documents are a set of alleged classified documents that have been in the center of the UFO conspiracy theories, of course. The documents, uh, they, they purport or, you know, to provide the evidence of secret government um, organizations formed to investigate the manage extra testicle matters, including the recovery of crashed UFO near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947. However, the authenticity of these documents has widely spread in question and have been widely considered by experts and scholars to be hoaxes. Here are exp explanations of the MJ-12 documents. Now, the background, the MJ-12 documents first surfaced in the late 80s and the early 90s. They were allegedly leaked to UFO researcher and filmmaker Jamie Shandera by uh, anonymous source. The documents were said to be classified briefing papers addressed to President Harry Truman. The content of the uh, documents, well, the documents consist of briefing papers, uh, memoranda and, and correspondence that outline the existence and activities of a secret group called the Majestic 12. This group was purported, purportedly 
created to Truman in 1947 to deal with the aftermath of the Roswell UFO incident. The three, cor- the three key points of the MJ-12 documents were the MJ-12 documents claim that a UFO crashed near Roswell and the recovered materials, as well as the bodies and the extra testicle beams, were taken into custody by the U.S. government. The second, the document lists the names of prom- prominent military and scientific uh, figures who were allegedly part of Majestic 12, including Vannevar Bush, James Forrestal, and Roscoe Hillencoater. Well, that's right. Then the third key point. The MJ-12 group was said to be responsible for the investigation, recovery, and concealment of evidence related to the UFOs and extratestical phenomenon. What has three balls and comes from outer space? E.T., the extratestical? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Now you had the controversies and the spec and the skepticism. Now, almost from the moment in their, of their release, the, authentic, uh, the authenticity of the MJ-12 documents have, has been heavily scrutinized. Many experts and researchers, including document uh, examiners, historians, UFO, ufologists, I can never say that correctly, they have raised concerns about inconsistencies in the language, formatting, and content of the documents. Some key figures mentioned in the ba- in the documents, such as Admiral Roscoe Hillencoder, denied any involvement with MJ-12. Additionally, historical inaccuracies and anachronisms were identified in the documents. Holy God, Voli! That is the not wait a minute. I'm not that's the craziest thing. I I just I've never ever heard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, no. oh, it's a shush. Ta-da! Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll you'll say that one day. Now, <sighs> then you have. Oh. The critics and the debunking. Yeah, don't ever forget that. No, yeah, you know how that goes. Notable critics, including document experts, UFO researchers, and government officials have declared the MJ-12 documents to be elaborate hoaxes. One of the key criticisms is that the language and formatting are inconsistent with the time periods in which they were purposely created. Go figure. Number six, the impact on UFO culture. And this is where we're getting to the point of the whole, the fun. Despite widespread skepticism and debunking, the MJ-12 documents have had a lasting impact on the UFO culture. They continue to be referenced in conspiracy theories and discussions surrounding government secrecy and UFO cover-ups. In summary, the MJ-12 documents are a set of alleged classified papers that claim to reveal a secret government group tasked with managing extratestical matters. While they have fueled conspiracy theories, they lack credibility due to the inconsistencies, historical inaccuracies, and widespread skepticism within the UFO research community. Most experts, though, consider them to be hoaxes and forgeries. That's a bully holy if you ever holy. Well, well, I mean, all right. Now, here we go. I want to explore the credibility of the government documentations and the implications of the Roswell. All right. Now, the, the credibility of government documents related to the Roswell incident is complex and debated topic. The main documents in question are the initial press release issued in the U.S. Army Air Force and subsequent statements as well as internal military memos. So, let's explore the credibility of these documents and their implications. The initial press release, July 8th, the description. On July 8th, 1947, the U.S. Army Forces issues a press release stating that a flying disc had been recovered from the 
Roswell. The statement was attributed to the Colonel William Blanchard, the base commander. The implications, the initial press release suggested that the military had recovered a flying disc. This fueled public speculation without the extratesticle nature of the debris. Number two, the subsequent press release, July 9th, 1947, the next day. The very next day, the military issued a revised statement explaining that the recovered debris was actually a weather balloon and not a flying disc. The implications, the sudden change in the official explanation led to confusion and skepticism. Some saw this as evidence of a cover-up, while others accepted the weather balloon explanations. Sheep! Uh, then, then three, Project Mogul. The description in the 1990s, the U.S. government officially de- de- declassified information about Project Mogul, a top-secret program involving high-altitude balloons and, and listening devices. The purpose of the project was to detect Soviet nuclear tests. So, they're saying it was not real, and then it was. Now, the implications was the government explanations shifted from a weather balloon to a project mogul. The military asserted that the debris recovered near Roswell was one of the th- these balloons, specifically a RON, RON target device. <clears throat> I mean, I th- do I really have to get into the it's a government lying thing? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, we all know. I mean, um, if anybody's on, uh, please hit like. Please uh, comment if uh, if it's boring you. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to know if you guys like this or not. Maybe it helps the channel. But thank you for joining. Uh, now then we get to. Um, the witness testimonies. Now, the description of the witness testimonies, various military personnel and civilian provided witness testimonies regarding the, US, the Roswell incident. Some initially described unusual debris, while others later revised their statements to align with the official explanations. The implications witness uh, testimonies are diverse and can be interpreted in different ways. Critics argue that changes in testimony over time raise questions about the real reliability of the accounts. Then the the, the, the declassified documents, uh, the declassified of the certain documents related to Project Mogul, provided an alternative explanation for the Roswell incident. These documents include internal memos still detailing detailing the perverse purpose of the activities of the project. Now, these implications, the declassified documents add credibility to the military's assertion that the debris was from the classified project involving high-altitude balloons. Uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, sorry, just... There we go. Now, conspiracy theories surrounding Roswell often suggest that the government covered up evidence of extratesticle life, leading to mistrust of official statements. The implications, the enduring conspiracies theories have led to lasting impact of several uh, public perceptions of government uh, transparency and trustworthiness. Now, the analysis and the skepticism, the description, various researchers, Historians and UFO enthusiasts have analyzed uh, the available documents, raising questions about inconsistencies, witness testimonies, government handling in the incident. Now, the implications. The ongoing analysis and skepticism contribute to the ongoing debate about the credibility of the government statements and the true nature of Roswell incident. In conclusion, the credibility of government documentation related to the Roswell incident is a, is a contentious issue. The shift in explanations, the witness testimonies, and the declassification of Project Mogul uh, documents all contribute to a complex narrative. While the official explanation points to a classified military project, I mean the enduring conspiracy theories, they continue to shape public perceptions of the incident. Ultimately, 
The Roswell incident remains a subject of historical debate and cultural fascination. Uh, all because of the lies. It, it really, it, I mean, even now, still, it's like, obviously, and still you know, this whole uh, paper thing, or show on it, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I don't know, you guys may have got bored and left. Now, the eyewitness testimony, eyewitness accounts. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, now this was a eyewitness account. It was summer 72, stationed in the Air Force Base in Nevada. Late one night during a routine patrol, I saw a bright light in the sky. At first, I thought it might have been classified military aircraft, but it got closer. It, it became clear that, that this was like nothing I'd seen before. The object was disc-shaped, hovering slight, silently and, and emitting a soft hum. It, it, it then shot off. At incredible speed, making maneuvers that defied the laws of physics, I reported it to my superiors, but, but the official response was, was dismissive, suggesting it was likely a weather anomaly. Well, the analysis, uh, consistency, the, uh, the witness provides specific details about the time, location, and appearance of the UFO, the mention of the reporting and the sighting adds credibility to the account. The consistency lies in the witness description of the object's un unconventional behavior and official response to the readability. The testimony is clear and concise, making it easy for listeners to you know, but the concrete details. Now you have eyewitness testimony to the civilian obser observer. It happened on a family camping trip. There's the desert. We were stargazing when, when we noticed formation of lights in the sky at first we thought we were airplanes or something but they moved too erratically the, the, the lights formed a perfect triangle almost hovering silently suddenly they shot off in different directions at incredible speed my kids they were scared and honestly so was I we reported it to the local authorities but, but we were met with skepticism and were told we just Probably just military exercise, just weird goddamn idiots. Uh, now the analysis was the witness, they described a triangle formulation of lights, uh, unusual movements and, and spectacle response uh, from authorities. The emotional reaction of the fear adds a human you know, element to it, to it, but it, you know, even then, you just don't know. Um, now, certainly discussing the challenges in analyzing visual effects and related UFO sightings, as far as the role of technology can be made compelling and informative. But let's introduce the topic. Today we're diving into the fascinating world of UFO evidence. Now, subjectively in perception, this, um, uh, just, uh, let's see. Now I got a bunch of different yeah. the night sky abduction. Late one night one late one summer night, Emily stargazed on the desert hill. Mesmerized by the constellations, a sudden flash of bluish light engulfed her. Paralyzed, she felt an otherworldly presence. Alien figures were luminous eyes surrounded her, and she was lev levitated into hovering spacecraft. The walls pulsated with an eerie glow as an extra testicle being conducted mysterious ex experiments before returning her to the hillside, disoriented and forever changed. Ah, this encounter, the forest encounter. Hiking alone in a dense forest, Mark stumbled upon a clearing base in a uh, natural glow. Strange symbols appeared on the ground as a uh, a, a, ethereal humming kind of filled the air. Suddenly a hovering saucer descended, revealing beings with elongated limbs. Mark, unable to move, was lifted into the ship. Memories of probing examinations and telepathic communication haunted him. He woke in the forest, surrounded by bewildered animals. 
Huh. The Desert Highway Abduction. Driving across the des desolate de uh, desert at dusk, Sarah's car inexplicably stalled. A binding light enveloped the vehicle, revealing a hovering craft. Being with elongated fingers and silver suits emerged, levitating Sarah into her ship. Inside a surreal dreamscape unfolded where she communicated through thoughts. As abruptly as it began, Sarah found herself back in the car, gripping the steering wheel with missing time and cryptic symbols etched into her memory. See all these? These are all true, like, uh, statements that these people put in. The Lakeside Incident. During a serene lakeside retreat, I've heard a lot about lakeside incidents, Jake witnessed anomalies, lights dancing across the water's surface. The lights cross, uh, coalesced into a massive saucer, and a humanoid figure emerged. A telepathic connection ensued, conveying ancient with cosmic wisdom. Embraced by a warm energy, Jake felt a profound connection to the cosmos. As the assassin ascended, uh, he was left alone, pondering the newfound insights that transcended earthly comprehension. The City Rooftop Abduction On a bustly city rooftop, Carlos glimpsed an, an otherworldly craft hovering silently. Mesmerized, he felt weightlessness, drawn toward the ship. Once aboard, he encountered beings with luminous skin, communicating through vivid projections. They revealed visions of humanity's interconnectedness with the universe. Carlos returned to the rooftop. His perception forever expanded, pondering the cosmic tapestry that envelops our existence. The Suburban Bedroom Encounter In the stillness of a suburban night, Lucy awoke to an otherworldly other presence in her bedroom. Luminous beings with iridescent eyes surrounded her. Unable to resist, she floated through the walls into a celestial realm. There she witnessed glimpses of humanity's destiny and to the interconnectedness of all life. Lucy awoke in her bed, her room bathed in an otherworldly glow, questioning the thin veil between reality and the cosmic unknown. Remember, yeah, it's pretty cool. I should. Uh, I got a list of all the other stories too if you guys want to hear uh, um, yeah I've got some more too um, let's see hey what's up Alice hands and knock how you doing uh, so I've got these other ten stories um, yep the silent cornfield abduction boy those are always fucking scary uh -oh. <laughs> on a moonlit night Emma found herself in the middle of a vast cornfield the air was thick with them otherworldly hum as a glowing orb descended. Beams of light enveloped her, revealing to to towering extratesical figures. Floating towards the uh, spacecraft, Emma felt weightless. Inside, she was surrounded by pulsating walls that seemed alive. She underwent co intri intricate examinations, and her thoughts interwoven with those of fallen or alien beings leaving her with cryptic visions of the cosmos. See, a lot of these are left with these visions of, you know, the cosmos, like, not bad or what, anything. Yeah, you can join, absolutely. Hey, Kelly, what's up? Yeah, I absolutely love to, love to join. 
the mountain ridge convergence. Hiking along a remote mountain ridge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can call in. I don't mind to join. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I love it when... Um, let's see. My, Hey, what's up? Hey, how are you? Is everything going okay or am I echoing? No, you're perfect. You're great. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, I, gosh, I haven't caught your show in a while. Oh, this yeah? Is, this is great what you're doing tonight. Oh, right on. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I've been kind of like uh, trying to change stuff around, you know, uh, where, I don't know, just trying to make it more... Uh, I don't know, you know, it's I I do this for you guys to make it fun for everybody, and I have a blast doing it. It's super fun. But well, thank I you. Had, I had I had to change my handle up again. You did? Oh, you did or you didn't? I did. Oh, you did. Right on. Right on. I do it about every ninety days. Yeah. Oh, right on. I got I got my reasons. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, brother. Uh, but I I'll tell you, I was skin in the game. You what? You might have remembered me as skin in the game. Were you the guy? Yeah, were you the one that called me that night? Yeah. From Canada? No, I'm from Indiana. Indiana. Yes. I think I even made you a Yes, dude. I Yes, how have you been doing? I've been doing great. How about yourself? Oh man, doing all right, you know. Just the normal uh surviving thing. I mean, you know, not 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 bad. Just hanging out. Trying to, like, get this show, whatever, you know, interesting. Yeah, and I, I love the topic that you're on, and I was just wondering if I can offer uh, uh, some some quick information. Um, Please. When I was young. Absolutely. Please do. Um, I remember waking up one night, and there was a... And I was young. I mean, I was probably, like, eight. And... There was this glowing, floating, like, entity above me, and and it was very peaceful. Yeah. And, and it lifted me up, and somehow, I don't know how you get through a house, okay? Right, I don't know how right. they do it. Yeah. But then, you know, behind our house is, was our 40-acre, um, what we had is kind oh. of a ranch we had 50 head of black angus cattle and we had wow. five four, four horses and and i just remember it was a moonlit night it was perfect and i floated and then i lost i lost time wow and um the next day i had to go to school uh-huh. and it just so happened the topic you know i had to come up with you know, and write a short story about something interesting. And they even said you could go with a paranormal if you wanted. Uh huh. And uh, I was given some information, and and that is, um, we have different types of beings that are, you know, well, not human like you and I. Uh huh. Okay. Now the grays. Yeah. They're they're humanoids. They're from here, okay? Oh, when, are they? When you think of extraterrestrial, uh-huh. They're subterranean. Oh. They also go into the depths of the ocean. Is that why their eyes are bigger? Yes, and and they've also been here a lot longer than we have. I've okay? heard Okay. Okay. They 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 they're ancient, okay? Yeah. yeah. And then wow. we also have um, interment, interdimensional beings, yeah. all of which, all of which, really, to be honest with you, uh-huh. don't always have our best interests in mind. Really, I've heard that before. And um, Lucifer is real, and they are in league with him. See, that's what I've heard. Okay, I. This is something I. I. This. Okay. Uh you got this information from when you were, uh, when you were, when they, when that night? That, that, yeah, that, that wasn't the first time I was taken. Um, when I was 11, I started, uh, my grandparents lived in southern Maine and they had a produce farm. Uh-huh. And I used to go out from 11 until I joined the military at 17. 
Uh-huh. And uh, I ended, believe it or not, I ended up in Air Force Special Operations, if you can imagine that. Oh. Run, by the, run by the CIA. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So there's uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna really choose my words carefully because. You know, I really like your show, and there is there is so much I'd love to share, but you know I can't. So, um, that's why I changed my handle, and pretty soon, in about two weeks, I'm dropping out. Oh, right, really? I mean, going off grid, I'm gone. Is there any way that you could keep in touch with me anyway? Um, I mean, off the grid because yeah, I honestly, mean, I'm I'm want to, I'm I'm wanting to do what you're doing. I'm wanting to go off of grid myself. Um, but uh, are you? So what's I mean? So you, when you say you got to choose your words, as then don't say anything that would get you in. Well. You know, keep case in your mind and choose your words carefully. Right. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it speaking in code. Yeah. But what we learned is to always have plausible deniability within choosing your words carefully. There you go. I like the way. Yeah. Yeah. So what we have right now, and you're noticing it, is uh, a lot of information is coming out. And you see how they're just readily releasing it. And if you've noticed, uh, and I, I don't watch television. But I don't I catch, either. I, I catch other people that are watching it. Yeah. And I see that all the shows right now uh-huh. are about aliens or asteroids. And, right. And to be honest with you, we got one coming in 2029. I've heard okay. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and um, that's why there's this big push to get who um, – see, um, we're going through phases of population reduction right now. Yeah. COVID was phase one and will continue on. Oh, yeah. uh, they'll keep releasing – man-made viruses uh-huh. and and people will keep taking the vaccine which actually is counterproductive to their immune systems is it bad to take that because i haven't i won't get what i won't get mine you no know, and, and 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 the thing is is when you know being in special ops in the air force i had to be what was known as worldwide uh immunized you know, for everything that's in the world that could kill you. Yeah. So it just never stopped. Right, and right, it right. It used to piss me off because, you know, I'm I'm six two and I was a good volleyball player playing tournaments down in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Uh huh. I was stationed at Hurlburt Field. That's the headquarters of Air Force Special Ops. Yeah. So I just loved being on the beach playing volleyball, but. God, it's hard to have a good spike swing when your arm's always sore from getting a shot. Uh, oh, right. Oh, shit. Yeah, we had a shot board up, and, and because I made the deployment team, not everybody can do that because you've got to go through all these specialized schools. Like, uh, well, I had to go through jump school, and I had to learn how to do halos, and I had to go through survival school, and I had to go through POW camp. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, dude, oh, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. nonstop, man. And I tell you, thank you for, 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 uh, for, 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 you know, fighting for us, for us, man. I, 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 I don't have really high know respect what I was for you. Fighting for. I was spending a lot of time in the, in Central America back then. It was known as Black Eagle Ops, and I don't even care anymore. I'll, I'll, I'll put this out there because it's common knowledge. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the last two years of, my uh, my uh, uh, term of service. Um, Bush Senior was in office. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, he used to be the head of the CIA, and uh, he's bad, bad. Who is? Bush Senior. Oh yeah, yeah, goddamn. Oh yeah, I imagine. Yeah, he ran our show. Yeah, 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 he did. God. And, um, and and it was funny because I was in Florida, and our our code word was, uh, 
you know, because you couldn't tell your bunk mate, you couldn't tell your girlfriend, you can't tell your family or anybody. You just had to have your go bags packed. And and if you were told, hey, you got to be on the tarmac at 6 a.m. Oh, you shit. Had to be there. Right, right. You know, and you right. didn't know where you were going or when you would be back. Yeah, you couldn't even ask. You just had uh-huh. to go, could uh-huh. right? Yeah, and, you just. And dude, I was so disillusioned because I was pretty young, you know? Yeah. And I remember coming back, flying back over the Gulf of Mexico, right? Going, geez, this is going to be all over CNN. And then instead, they hustle us into a trailer next to the hangar and tell us, you didn't see nothing. Nothing happened. You will not speak to anybody about this. Holy shit. Ever. Oh, you should have seen all the documentation I had to sign. Oh, oh, man, I bet. Signing your life away. God damn. And plus, you know, when I was going through basic, I was a squad leader and and, uh, I was, I made honor graduate. But, you know, I was kind of worried because they kept pulling me out of classes, putting me in front of it. It started with uh, a, a, uh, first lieutenant, wow. and he just started asking me all these head questions, and uh, then pushing these little questionnaires in front of me, these multiple choice, and then write, you know, write out a scenario. And, wow. Uh, and uh, and then the, you know, and then it graduated to a captain, and then finally a major. You know, and every time I think that's how I made honor graduate because if they pulled you out of class, you automatically got a hundred percent. Right on, <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. that's awesome. Hey, well, and, hey, whatever works, and if they're pulling well, you out, well, I yeah. think I might have. I only missed a few questions on the ASVAB, um, but uh, <laughs> um, that, that did help getting those hundred percent. But I, I was really kind of, you know. I was worried, and 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 the major he goes, well, Airman, we've asked you a lot of questions, and uh, I was wondering, do you have any for me? Yeah. And I'm like, well, sir, um, yes, I do. Um, I said, I'm a squad leader. I'm up for I'm up for honor graduate. Uh, I just made marksman. Um, and I had my stepdad in my head too, who told me I would never make it through the military. Oh, he was an, uh, asshole. He was an asshole. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. One of them. Yeah, those never help. Yeah, he was in the army. Um, oh yeah, uh, and a cop. <laughs> oh shit! Oh man, yeah. to add to all of them, wow, man. Yeah, I, I, he didn't like me much. Um, but anyway, uh. So I had him in my head, so I just said, well, sir, does the Air Force think it made a mistake with me or something? I don't understand what this is all about. He goes, oh, shit, no, Airman, this is for your security clearance. Whoa. And I'm like, oh, you mean like top secret or something? (laughs) And he goes, and he just, he looked at me, I mean, very sternly dead in the eyes and he goes top secret was the last guy you talked to oh shit yeah so what i found out is i got lifetime wow really and just to let you know i've been contacted over the last few years yeah i um, i imagine so. strangers strangers really? come up to me and they know my first name and oh they always tell me the same damn thing uh-huh and what's, you know what they tell me? What's that? Behave. Oh. Well, is coming onto a podcast and talking behaving, or is that, uh. Because I love that you're on here. No, as, as a matter of fact, it, I mean, I'd love, I'd love to tell you so much more. So, so very much more. Oh, I would love to hear so very much more. But the thing is, I'm probably already pushing the envelope a little bit, but I kind of don't care anymore. You kind of get to that point where you're just like, come and do your worst, because you know, <laughs> I'm not going to live in fear anymore. I'm just not. All right. If, if you were going to take me out for what I know, you would have already done it. Uh, yeah, 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 that's true, too. I mean, don't, don't. 
Her, yes, man, but I would love to know. And if you need to get like do it on like uh through email too, that's fine. But I would, I'm dying to hear this. Yeah, I, I think what I'll do is I'll send you my email. Yeah. Uh, in, in chat. Okay. Um, any, anybody that wants to get in touch with me on an email can do that. Okay. Would that be a little better? Because I, I mean, I don't want you to go get, in, you know, but I really want to talk to you. And I will keep anything that you tell me. I mean, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, this dude, this dude said, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm pretty quiet, dude. But, um, one thing I, I I have the ability to do is read people's voices. Yeah. Tone, frequency, and resonance. Ah, uh, okay, I got you. And you have a very, very honest tone, frequency, and resonance. You are a kind individual. You're of the human kind. Uh, and, and you need to yeah. know, and and everyone needs to know. As long as we're talking about these these beings out there that may possess, you know, superpowers over us, yeah. believe it or not, we have ancient superpowers that have been hidden from us. I believe that a hundred percent. And it's time that we relearn them. And I, you know what? I've been trying to look into ways to do this, um, and and, and uh. I would love to learn about some of these. Uh, do you, I mean, is it something that you, you look into or just it stuff that you know? Or, um, I know it, you it, probably can't a, talk about been, this it's either. It's been a heck of a, Joey, it's been a heck of a process. Um, unfortunately, you know, um, we lose a lot of veterans to suicide. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, if it's suicide, yeah. And uh, veterans aren't really being treated that well. Like I I can't. I fucking hate how we treat veterans. Don't get me on that well, fucking first subject. Of all, it's we're the bullshit. Last line of defense, and they're trying to get rid of us. Yeah, but man, I, I don't get the, the the way that we treat veterans. I swear to God, that alone, the government should be ashamed of themselves for the way that that they fuck makes me so mad. I I, I can't believe that you go fight for our country and you can't come back here. They should be taking care of these people. Yeah, it's. I would give everything I could to. Well, to the thing is, this. you come back and you're you're not the same as when you left. Oh, I imagine, I imagine not. But, I imagine but not. But your family and your friends, they want you to be the same. Right, 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 and, right. And then you become, you can become triggered at times. Or oh, I bet. You, but the end, the next thing you know, you've scared the hell out of your family and friends. Yeah. You've gotten into drugs and alcohol too deep. Right, right, right. And well, but you know what though, that's and, not. And the next thing you know, your ass is on the street and you're homeless. Yeah, see, that's so fucked up that that happens to fucking anybody that fights for our country and has to be homeless. Coming, I don't care. What it is, I bet you guys, are, I bet you screwed up when you come back, but that doesn't give any right to be escalated to the streets. I mean, you know what I mean? And then it is a hard, that's got to be a hard situation. I'm sorry that you, any, any of our, any of our, uh, any of our soldiers have to go through that. I'm so sorry that you guys have to. I bet that's a lot horrible. of us. A lot of us are doing better right now because we're sick of it. And yeah. we're starting to reach out to one another. That's and awesome. We are, we're finding our own support groups. Right on. Right on. And, and it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you were blowing somebody's head off or you were in the rear with the gear. Uh, yeah. Um, Absolutely. The fact that you were in harm's way. Yeah. And as they say, all gave some, some gave all. Yeah. So, oh, man. Oh. What happened was, um, you know, this team that I was on, these were like the most amazing guys in the world. I okay? bet. Man, I bet. I mean, super intelligent, super funny. I, I mean, mean, we got the job done. We did what, and then the next thing you know, we're back on the beach in Florida with, and we're given extra time off, you know. 
And, and we're just killing it, you know. Chicks are digging us. We look, we're in the best shape of our lives. <laughs> and, you know, we're young. And, uh, and then, you know, um, I got out, man, because I, I'd never been free, you know. And, uh, I had to go through hell to get my base commander, uh, to sign my discharge paperwork. Jesus. And he, man. he flat out told me, he goes, he goes, you will never be a part of anything as important as this the rest of your life. Oh, wow. And I said, sir, I've given it a lot of thought, but I kind of want to see what the rest of the world has to offer. Right, right. And he said, well, I'm going to go ahead and sign your discharge paperwork, White, but I want you to know something. You're never out. Really? Yeah. And I'm like, Yes, sir. I understand. I still have an inactive four, four more years of inactive uh, duty where in time of war I can be recalled. Yeah. And yeah. I was for uh, the first Iraq war, but that was over so fast I never actually had to go. Yeah. Yeah. And then the time, by the time that Afghanistan, my, my commitment was up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was very fortunate for me. Very, I mean, I've got all my limbs. I've got, I mean, I don't have any extra metal in my body. Right I'm, I'm very grateful to God for that, that yeah. I came out of some really bad places unscathed. But, and that's, that's awesome. But some of it's, you know, some of those scars are inside. Some Absolutely. Those, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I bet, I imagine. Oh well, yeah. And I stayed in touch with these guys, and I ended up. It was like, ah, oh, shit. Gulf two started up, and then two of them died over there. And then, oh shit. And That's... then four more died in Afghanistan. And then, damn, damn. And then the last three, I'm the only one left of my deployment crew. I'm the only one left. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn. Of, of, of our team, my deployment team. Ah, oh, damn. And the other ones took their own lives. Man, let me ask you, is it frustrating for you to have to fight for a government that, that, that does this to you and your guys? We don't know, we don't, we don't know how fucked up it is until we get home. Until it's over, right. Until right. we're trying to reassimilate back into society. I hear you, yeah. And, 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 you know, we, we do our best, but we get triggered sometimes by idiots. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and we, we have to go to counseling and, and let people know they don't have your experiences. They couldn't possibly imagine. Yeah. You know? Right. So, right. Even, so yeah. God gives you grace, so you give them grace. And that's how I have stayed out of trouble now. I mean, I used to, I used to, I used to throw it down pretty hard with some dudes. I bet. And it was always over a check. You know how it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But, oh. but yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I fell into the abyss and then I, and I couldn't get out. I couldn't crawl out of the abyss and it was funny. I, I had money. I had a nice house, a good wife, uh, I mean, and, and, and I was completely, I mean, at the bottom of the ocean Dude. and I was, uh, drinking too much and, uh, I didn't I'm care so that you had to go through that. And my, so. my, a good friend of mine that I, I, I used to be a mortgage broker and I did his, I went to him and I said, Hey, look, I need some benzos cause I want to wean myself <laughs> off of alcohol. Right. So he wrote me a prescription for Xanax. No, so, yeah. so I went and picked him up. I went home and I poured a handful in my hand and washed it down with a fifth of vodka. Yes, sir. And uh, they called my death. Uh -oh. I coded five times. They called my death. The nurse ran out and told the doctor, don't go tell his family he's dead. His heart's beating. You need oh, to get shit. back in here. <laughs> oh, and and, and, oh, and to be honest, my whole life, I always wanted to believe in God. Okay? 
Yeah. I always wanted to believe it was real. I but hear you. I was just, there, it was, there was just some about it I just couldn't get into. I it, totally know? hear you. Yeah. And now let me tell you something. I've seen what the Holy Spirit can do, and it is super freaking natural, bro. Yeah, it really, man. It, I mean, if you, if, you know, I always wanted more proof. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Wow. And I'm here, to, I'm here to testify that God is real. Christ is real. The Holy Spirit is really real. And it is supernatural. And if you want to be paying attention to this world right now, you will see the supernatural right in front of your eyes. Huh. But you need what's known as discernment. And that's the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Right. And then you really won't care to watch TV anymore because the movie's right out there in front of your eyes. Really? What? Okay, let me ask you this. What's the best way to get this accurate information? Which kind? What? What kind of information in particular? Um. Well, okay. I've always had this um, inclination to. Like you said, uh, I've always wanted to, I believe in a higher power, I do, but I'm one of those people that's like, I really, I mean, I, I've i never met God myself, um, it's like aliens, aliens, I mean, I've never met an alien myself, I've, I've, I've never, I know, I've, the weird things have happened to me, but I've been, my memory's been whatever, joggle the race, I, I know the weirdest shit, I mean, I, I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that uh, coincidences yeah, you're, you're, exist. Your brain's a computer. You know that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So your they 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 can erase certain things in your memory. Oh wow, yeah, so you, oh man, I, absolutely. And I know there's times that I know that I've died, but I'm still here. And I just want proof of. I want knowledge of what is out there, of what's going on. Uh, proof that you that you say that you would be shot over, or your friends, or or, or or anybody, not you per se, but you know what I mean. Uh, I would just like to get some kind of, uh, you know, I meditate a lot. Um, I don't know if that's a if that's a uh, something of, of of finding yourself. But it, Absolutely it's it trying. Is. I'm, you know, I'm at least trying. Uh, but, uh, but it's. When you I say know meditate, when you say meditate, do you shut the rest of the world out and go into deep thought? Uh, I just shut the world out and just go into my own head world. Right. And just I listen. I tune into the to these the sounds in my ear and the light that I see in with my eyes, you know, from my pineal gland. But, uh, from that, I mean, I don't. Oh, so you've decal, you've decalcified your pineal gland. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I mean, you know, I hope, uh, I mean, I, you know, I hope that I have, um, sounds like you have, you know, I try, I, I really work on it, but, but I don't, you know, but, uh, but again, I mean, I've had incidences, uh, that have been absolute where where I know meditation works, and I've gone to places that I it, it, it just has amazed me. Uh, just pure, I mean, just amazing places. But every time I do, I get like hit out of it or something. And but it's just it's a practice, you know what I mean. And the more you practice, the you know the the more your pineal gland, uh, it, you like you said, you it's, you you you. You get it pure, uh, you know, get that gunk off of it. And I don't know, you know, I hope that the, with, with the meditate, with the uh, exercises I do, if they help, I don't know. But uh, I'm just, I would like to get answers of, of. They sure don't, they sure aren't hurting you, brother. Right. Keep meditating. But prayer. Now, here's here's something that I something I was going to ask you too. Like with prayer, I think you and I are very similar because for so long I considered myself a very spiritual person. I, you can feel that 
there is something out there, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So for me, having to come back from that and breaking my family's heart, I mean, can you imagine what I did to them? Man, no, no. And I'm sorry. Did you know to this that. day, I, I don't is. think they've ever forgiven me? Man, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Well, it's, 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 you know what? I, I, I'm slowly earning their trust back. I so, know. Uh, uh, that's good. I mean, at least, you think, you know, at least they'll, you know, they'll give you that chance. But, but, but for me and for you, um, like a lot of people out there call them false prophets or whatever. They're going to try and command you on how you need to find God. Exactly. All right. right, right. You know what? Uh, uh-uh. uh. You'll do it when you're ready. And for me, it was when when I was completely broken. It was when I knew that there was no. I felt there was no way out, and I was willing to give anything a shot. Yeah. And yeah. And this this feeling came over me, and I was alone in my my living room and I remember COVID and all that crap was starting up and it was I, I was already was given second sight into seeing how that was gonna go. And uh and I was just I was just devastated, okay? Yeah. I was I was completely broken. Yeah. So I sat on my couch I closed my hands together in prayer, and I, I asked I asked God for three things, and I didn't even know how to pray at the time. I didn't know. Well, theologians will tell you you go through Christ to the Father. And anyway, but I was just desperate and uh, and broken. Yeah. And and I just said, God, I really need you. And I want to thank you for all the great things that were in my life. And I want great things in my life again. Yeah. And I prayed for three things. I said, one, I, I, I want you to restore my mind because I think I've drank myself retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, but I know what you mean. <laughs> Don't worry, he restored it and then some. Yeah, right on. <laughs> it's not he funny. restored it and then some. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and, oh, yeah. And then I said, I I want you to I I want to be redeemed and I want you to know that I I repent for all the people that I've ever hurt in my life. Yeah, yeah. And I tried to think of every every bad thing I've done, you yeah. know. Oh yeah. And I and I and I, and I don't know. This took a while, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a oh, good yeah. guy, but we're all sinners. Oh yeah. And no, I so I'm like I'm racking my brain. I'm trying to come <laughs> up with everything. And then finally, I just go, "All right, Lord. Um, obviously, because I used to party and drink a lot and." you know, do some bad stuff. I can't remember everything I should ask for forgiveness for. Right. So I remember saying, would, can I be forgiven for that too, even though I can't remember to ask for it? Right. And I heard a whisper in my ear, and it was Christ. See, Christ doesn't shout at you. Right. He whispers. Yeah. Yeah, those people that shout at blow, with blow horns, you're going to burn in hell and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Peshaw, go away. <laughs> That's not what Christ does. Right. <laughs> anyway, he said, I'm going to let you feel it. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I fell down on the floor in a fetal position and felt more emotional pain then you can then and it only lasted a few seconds before he like it's like he wrapped me in a warm blanket and he picked me up and he told me to dry my eyes 
and he said, now go out and get on the path. Wow. Yeah. And ever since then. Wow, man, that's deep. And, 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 and I was killing it. I had money. I had a house. I had a wife. I had great, you know, my kids are all grown now. Um, yeah, and, yeah, mine and, are too. And everything went to hell. Really? Because guess what happened? I, rebu- I rebuked Lucifer in uh, the process. Yeah, I did. I, I know what you mean. I totally did. Okay. So one thing you should study is derivatives of words because words have power and meaning. And when we were talking earlier about choosing your words carefully. Yeah. And then using your tone, your frequency, your pitch. That's why texting sucks. Everybody yeah, that's exactly why texting sucks. You said you know, derivative of what? Derivative of words? Most all words are derivative of Greek and Latin. Yeah. And uh, one of the best words is kind. Um, and we're of the human kind. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's how I picked myself up and I moved forward and I started to see anything. And I started kicking ass, man. Really? I started being able to predict shit. Which I've always been able to do. I was always told I had second second sight. Yeah. And I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and let something slip here. Because uh-huh. <laughs> I really am getting tired of hiding. Yeah. And one of the things that I did in special ops was this thing called remote viewing. Have you ever ever yes. heard of it? Yes. I man, you know, I've been working on it, uh, undoing it. And okay. I've really been working on it, and it's uh, yeah. Just be careful. Be I don't careful know if I'm doing it right or not. And I hear you need to be careful doing it, but it's something I have been looking into oh. and trying. Well, I still I, I don't do it anymore. I don't do it anymore because I, when I was I was really getting good with it, and there's these podcasts that I'm on that are pretty big. Yeah, and I got to be friends with some people, and I can tell them what color shirt they were wearing, and what they were looking at, or what they were holding in their hand. And it's not like the movies, okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, see, when you do that, yeah, they're impressed for a second, and then you scare the hell out of them, and the next thing you know, they don't take your phone calls anymore. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, kidding. Man, I, I predicted I, things that come tr- for my family. They yeah. don't want to be around me. Wow. And and my ex-wife went to a Pentecostal church with her mother. And I don't know if you know much about Pentecostal churches or not. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, they're a little bizarre (laughs) like they speak in tongues and some of them even break out snakes and shit (laughs) but anyway um they have this they have this elder there that's known as the reader okay and my ex-wife and she was my ex-wife at the time and her mother who i can't believe how they turned on me Except I scared the holy hell out of them. <laughs> Not by threatening them or anything like that physically. Yeah. Right. Just, just. But this, you know what this reader told me? What's that? I told them, and they, then my wife told me that when I came back from the dead, I had a demon attached to me. Mm. That's scary shit, too. Yeah, and I love the night. I love to be out in the dark. I'm yeah. not afraid of the dark. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in Air Force Special Operations, we did everything under the cover of darkness. Right, right, yeah. Darkness I love is the my dark. old friend. I do love the dark. Hello, darkness, my old friend. not scare me at all. talk to you again. <laughs> yeah. The sound of silence. Yeah, that's a good one. But anyway, what I really, I really want to hurry up and get to for you yeah. is I developed my own personal relationship with Christ, okay, okay. and the Holy Spirit, okay? Yeah. 
You need to find yours. I can't tell you how you're going to do it. For me, I had to be broken into a million pieces yeah. and beyond, beyond sorry. I know it's and, and hurt for just things that, that were very, very hard. Yeah. After you did, make that, peace with it. did good things start happening to you after that? Now, here's the thing. You brought up a word called luck. Did you know the word luck is a derivative of Lucifer? No, but that makes sense. So when you wish someone good luck, that's not a good thing. Wow. That makes sense. My whole life, I had, I was the luckiest bastard on the planet. I was born six, you know, I'm six two. Women consider me a pretty handsome fella. Uh, I'm fairly smart. Uh, I've been able to accomplish many things in my life. But once I rebuked Satan, the luck ran out and everything got taken from me. And I got humbled like you would not believe. Mm-hmm. Homeless, sleeping in my car. After going, after five years ago, having $400,000 in the black in my bank. Man. It happened that fast. See, I'm sick of bad shit happening to me. It just keeps happening. And I try to live right. My luck ran out when I rebuked Lucifer. Yeah. Do, do you know how many times I should have gotten in trouble for the stupid shit in my life and I just thought I was living a charmed life? No, I was lucky. I was with Lucifer. Right. But you better believe as soon as I rebuked him and I became the better person that I'm supposed to be, uh, one small misstep and you get the hammer brought down. Uh, yes. I know exactly what you're saying. I know, yes, brother, I know exactly what you're saying. Because I've been trying to do that, and I did one thing, fuck it, I swear to God, and man, it's, I have, I am paying for it. I am, karma, I've got karma to burn, apparently, because, uh, I must, uh, I'm, I must be burning up some karma, man, because, dude, I, I did one thing that was morally wrong that Car- I don't, karma wouldn't is, do. Karma's just a word that I'm not really in favor of either. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But, you sound like, what, do you like to get out in nature? I love it. Alright, when I you're out it. there. Yeah. Let's start. Looking a little more closely, listening a little more closely, uh-huh. and invite the Holy Spirit into your heart. Right on. Okay. All right. That would be instruction number one. Okay. I love being out in the in the. I love being out in the in and just outside in the. I always have, I'm always outside in my backyard, but I like, I, I light a campfire and I get my, uh, my, my telescope out and I look at the stars and, and yeah, shit like man, that. Isn't it cool? No, man, I love it. And I'm in mean, looking at Jupiter and the, and, and the Galilean moons and, and, and I like, a week I like, or so we go, did you see moon, Venus move past, or the moon move past Venus? Yeah, man, it's amazing. God, amazing. I mean, I, yeah. it, it, it's amazing. I, uh, Venus has been out, man. Venus is, I wonder what's really going on on Venus. I don't think it's, I don't think it's like, uh, I don't think it's what the, uh, scientists say it is myself, but who knows? You know, if you find out, you let me know because I'm kind of intrigued by that as well. Are you, man? I'll let you know if I'm, I'm, I'm doing a show actually in a couple of days on Venus. Uh, and I pulled up. I got found some in, pretty interesting stuff. Man, I found this picture, uh, and it was that Russian probe that landed in Venus, like in the '60s. And it, there was a picture it took. And I swear to God, 
I mean, I swear that there were footsteps walking up to the, that walked away from this. And now the picture is never there. You cannot find this picture. And it was a picture that was on Venus. I swear there's something more to Venus than what they are, are, are saying. Ain't it something? I'll uh, the, definitely. The I'm doing a show in a couple days. I'll let you know what I find, you know. Oh, I got something really funny and cool to tell you. Awesome. I love that. Okay. So, did you catch any of the meteor showers this year? You Like the Placides? I did. Did you yes. see those earlier? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super cool. And, okay. And then... And then I told my mom, because she likes to watch them too, every year, we, you know, when the Placides come. And then I said, well, mom, the Draconids are coming on the uh, 7th and 8th of October. Yeah. And that's from Draco. Yeah. And, you know, Draco's not good. No, no. That I remember that. That was a whole... Uh... That was when... Uh, that, that was when... Oh, God. Was that when it was coming from... Uh... From, uh, oh, what was it? They called it Child. That, 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 oh, I don't think there was a big thing going on there. Well, but Draco's, Draco's bad, bad. Really? Draco's, it's Greek. Uh-huh. Um, What's it and, mean? And, and, and if there's a thing known as Draconian Law, have you ever heard of that? I don't think so. Oh, write it down and look it up. It's what happens after martial law fails. <laughs> oh, cool. shit. Joking? Jo- what is it? Draconian law. Draconian. Awesome. Draconian look up. Law. Now, look, now I'm telling you, when the food runs out and the grid goes down uh, and there's no gas and martial law is imposed yeah. and, and martial law ain't enough to take care of society, then draconian law will be put in place. Oh, shit. Look up draconian law. Oh, let's check this out. So when mom and I were sitting out in the pasture and we had a beautiful night to watch the Placides, yeah. I said, we got to get together again and watch the Draconian meteor shower. I said, that'll be on the 7th and 8th. And I said, now I want to tell you something right now, mom, because I've been studying string theory, quantum mechanics, and quantum physics. And I'm starting to, that's how you connect all the dots, all right? Look, brother, we're all way freaking smarter than we've been led to believe. Right. The television, the airwaves, the cell phones, the cell phone towers, the food, the water, everything that's been messed up with is retarding our brains. Yeah. We have superhuman ability to understand and see things and you talked about your pineal gland this all comes together so i was sitting out there and i said hey mom when the draconian meteor shower comes from draco something big 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 is going to happen on those days the seventh and the eighth and she goes Jeff, why do you, why do you got to say stuff like that? Mm-hmm. I said, Mom, aren't I usually right? She goes, well, I'm not saying you're not right. It's just that it's like, can't we just enjoy tonight? Why do you got to tell me that there's going to be something bad in the future? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, Mom, I'm sorry. Right. Mm-hmm. Guess what happened on the 7th and 8th of October during the Draconian meteor shower? Oh, shit. You don't remember? Uh-uh. That's when the boss attacks Pal- That's when Pal- That's when the whole thing happened over in the Middle East oh, with Palestine. That's <laughs> right. I don't watch TV ever. The 7th and the 8th. I called my mom up and I said, remember when I said mark your calendar? Yeah. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, I don't watch TV that much, but I remember that. I do remember that, hearing about that. The seventh, the seventh was when uh, Hamas struck, and then the eighth is when Israel retaliated. Wow! The Draconian meteor showers. Wow! And I told my mom during the Placides 
that when those come, yeah. something big and bad is going to happen, and it's all connected, and it's biblical, it's universal, and, you know, just, I'm just going to tell you right now. Yeah. You, you would think that when I can share this stuff with people that I've known, like, my immediate friends and family. Yeah. See, I can't because they want the old me back. The guy yeah. before he checked out, you know. Oh, yeah. He was more yeah. gre gregarious and a chameleon. And it was yeah. everything to everyone. Right. And now, now they're just scared of me. Huh. Wow. I think I know too much. Wow. See, it, I want to hear that. They're not I would, in awe of you, bro. It's I not would, as cool as you think. I bet not. I would love to hear about it, though, but I bet it's not. As, I bet it is probably not. Like you said, it probably isn't at all that. You use, you, it, it, when this comes to you, just be prepared. With, you, uh, may lose, you may lose, and this will hurt, you may lose the ones closest to you that aren't going to make it. Yeah, shit. Yeah. But like you and I talking, um, I already consider us friends. Oh, me too. Absolutely, man. I, and, I definitely want to keep in and, touch. And believe it or not, like there's you know, others, there's plenty of others of us out there that we all have something to bring to the table as far as knowledge. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, there's two things. There's being smart and then there's being wise. Yeah. Okay. Right, they're right. not the same thing. Did no. you know that? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, they're not. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're exactly so, right. So I've always been a smart ass, a smart, <laughs> smart, smart guy. Uh, yeah. But now I'm in my, you know, middle age fifties. I'm I'm wanting to be more wise now. Right, that's exactly where I'm at. I'm 46, I'm like 47, whoops. I'm like, man, I'm ready to be more wise and not... Yeah, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean, man. I'm well, listen to, be, listen to people that have been on this planet a while and and don't judge... You know, that's the other thing about wisdom is when you, when you stop judging people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've never walked in their shoes, right? Exactly, man. That's one thing so, I, I will never do is judge anybody because you never know what they well, were doing. Well, we try not to. but You never know what was judges. going on with them a day ago or four hours ago. I really don't judge. That's one thing is you'll never, ever hear me talk shit or judge anybody because, man, you just never know what they were going through an hour ago. Yeah. I find myself doing it from time to time, and I, then I have to go walk somewhere and chastise myself for doing it. <laughs> I'm just a smart ass, so I'll joke about it. But but yeah, I I man, I just I uh, I think here's what I think. Here's my philosophy. We are all here on on the same earth, trying to do the same thing. And that's live. And man, let's all work together and make it easier. Life is already a, a pain in the ass. It's already, a, I mean, life will throw you curveballs out the ass. But isn't it, a, isn't it a little bit easier if we all like have each other? I mean, I don't mean to sound gay or sh and shit like that, but isn't it better like if we all <laughs> have each other gay, to, bro. to help us? Like, you know that's what I'm saying? What we're. Keep I mean, going. But brother, we need to not you're speaking we need, my language. We need to not be uh, like we are fighting. here to help one another. Exactly, and man, that's where I mean, I'm, I'm a that that's why I don't I don't understand why people want to judge and be ass or, or or even let's all work together, man. Why? I mean. We've already got people working against us. Let's work together to go against us. We Let's are unite. all of the human kind, yet some of us are a little better at this skill or that skill. And right. And when so, the ship goes down, right, we're going to need each one of those little parts of those skills. And, and, yeah. 
And, and one thing I've been encouraging everyone is to learn advanced life-saving skills. Yeah, right. Yeah. And buy heirloom seeds. And buy what? Heirloom seeds. <laughs> Do you know what those are? I have no idea. Well, heirloom seeds have not been genetically modified. Huh. Heirloom seeds can replenish themselves year after year after year. The seeds you buy from, you know, anywhere you go to buy seed packets, yeah, they produce one year's crop. If you harvest those seeds and try to grow something with them the next year, it won't be the same thing. It'll be a mutant. Wow. Version. Really? Yeah. Huh. Or they won't even grow at all. Mm -hmm. But heirloom seeds, and what's great about heirloom seeds is when you think about this country, did you know where almost all the seeds came from for all the fruits and vegetables we have growing? They're not natural to America. They were they were sewn into the sleeves of the immigrants that came through Ellis Island in New York. Wow. That's cool. That's so when they got here, they could plant and eat. That's pretty cool. Wow. Heirloom yeah. seeds. Heirloom seeds, man. Oh, H E I R L O U U M. I always remember that. Heirloom is something that you pass off for generate, like heirloom furniture or heirloom anything that. Yeah. Anything that perpetuates time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So get yourself some heirloom seeds. Huh. Get yourself some chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I want some so bad. Man, I want some chickens so bad. <laughs> I want some chickens really bad. Man, I have had such a tremendous night talking with you. Man, I have Thank too. You. I, I really appreciate you calling, man. I always love it when you do. I love hearing from you, man. Hey, uh, you, you're 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 gonna you're gonna tune in, okay? You're gonna find you're gonna you're gonna find your relationship, and uh, it'll in the in the thing about it, it's yours. It's no one else's. Right. You don't right. have to have the same one as anybody else, because God made you a special human being, all your own. Right, okay, right, so yeah. your relationship with Christ and the Father, which is God, is yours. Nobody yeah. else's. Right. It's your personal, and it's the one you get to get when you go on nature walks or you're doing whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. You're and you're exactly right too. I mean, it's yours. Nobody else's. Yeah. Yeah. And don't let anybody pull you into one of these religious cults. Yeah, no. Uh, oh, no, I've, dude, I've, I've been tried to pull into cults. Um, I've been called an oracle, a prophet, all these, because I, you know, was messing around with them because I thought I was a smart ass having fun with them. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I had to run for the hills, bro. <laughs> I totally hear you. Church of Latter Day Saints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're infiltrated by the CIA, also. Yeah. Man, I bet. Man. Yeah, they're bad, bad. That didn't surprise me at all. God, no. Yeah, I'm really glad you called in, man. It's always awesome to hear from you. Uh, well, when I saw you were on, I was like, oh, man, I want to talk to this guy. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. And I love it when you call. I do. I love it when you call, man. It's well, always thank good to you. hear from you. Thank yeah. you. You're, you're, I appreciate you saying that. And, uh, I appreciate that, you know, on your platform, you gave me the opportunity to lend my voice. So. Man, absolutely, man. Anytime. Hey, listen, this podcast is your podcast as well, man. You can call anytime, man. You're welcome to come on and, man, 
Call any time, brother. Any time at all. Hey, can I do something real quick before I let you go? Yeah, absolutely. But it's totally up to you. Yeah, absolutely. What's up? Do you mind if I leave us with a prayer? No, man, no. All right. Hold on a second. All right. Everybody is leaving us with a prayer, so be cool. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, we're praying to you tonight. We know you made us in your own image. We know we have much more in us than we've been shown. May it be that we find our way with each other of the human kind. May we help each other, support each other, encourage each other. May we be brothers and sisters in arms in this war against the evil that is plaguing this earth. Whether it be from bad human beings, otherworldly human beings, or sinister humanoids that have been here for a long time. We are God's chosen. And together when we unite and we realize the true power we have within us, there is no way we will fail. And to everyone out there that is going through a hard time right now, may you be blessed. May Christ come and warm and wrap you in a warm blanket and tell you and whisper in your ear, don't give up. Do not ever give up. Hang in there. The fight is worth it. And heaven is real, and it will be the reward. Until then, let's just keep learning and sharing. Through Christ to the Father, amen. Man, that was absolutely awesome. Very well said. I couldn't have said that any better. Amen, brother. For real, thank you. I want you guys to have a good night. And Joey, I'll, I'll try and catch you a couple more times before I hit to the backwoods, all right? Man, please do, all right? Uh, definitely, man. Hit me up. Don't, yeah, don't, don't take off without me, uh, being able to get a hold of you, man. I, I just want to know how, every, how you're doing and everything. I want to keep in touch, all right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll give you some contact information. All right, brother. And, uh, you can let me know what's going on in the outside, and I'll let you know what's going on with my, uh, I got my crew. We, we got a rally point, and we're, we're meeting up. Man, awesome, brother. Cause, uh, I'm in, I'm gonna, come, I'm gonna come join you, man. I appreciate you, brother. Everybody. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much for tonight. You hey, are man. such a genuinely great, Great individual. Man, you are too, brother. I promise you, I promise you, God loves you, bro. Man, I appreciate that a million, brother. Thank you, man. All right. Have a great night. Hey, you too, man. Keep in touch, all right, brother? You better believe it. All right, man. Have a good night. Have a good new year, man. You too, Joey. All right. Later, brother. Bye. Everybody, that was all hands on deck. Uh, Very good dude. He's called before, man. uh, And I... I'm uh, absolutely had a nothing but uh nothing but a good thing to man super good dude. If you uh don't man follow him and keep in touch and uh there's such good people on on um on Podbean. I met some real cool people. Uh he's one of them man big chief you're another great one. Uh man I appreciate all you guys. Uh I couldn't do this without you guys man. I don't mean to sound all gay and show whatever, but, uh, you guys are all awesome. Uh, man, all hands on deck. Everybody give him a shot, man. Give him a hand, man. That was a great, uh, that was an awesome, uh, 
craft room. Um, and I'm not even like the biggest uh, prayer dude, but man, that that was uh, I could change my whole outlook on that. You don't know how much I appreciate that. Man, well, guys, I've got Podbean only lets me do this for two hours. I'm at 155. Uh, all hands on deck. Please keep in touch. Uh, email me, jshaddy1977 at gmail.com. Uh, Big Chief, you've got mine, I think. Uh, but, yeah, this is my email. Dude, uh, don't forget here. I'm just going to put this right here. Um, but, yeah, everybody. Uh, definitely, man. Give all hands on deck. Well, what's up? Hey, Big Chief, I appreciate you, brother. You guys, uh, I couldn't do this without you, man. I love you guys to death. Love my pod being your homies, man. You guys are the best. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I well, Podbean only lets me do this for so long, those bastards. But what a great show tonight. I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, Big Chief, hey, keep in touch, brother. I want to talk to you too about some stuff. Uh, man, all hands on deck. You got my email. You guys had an awesome show tonight. Man, you guys have a great night, all right? Hey, thank you, Al. You guys are all awesome. Thank you, thank you. Make me say what's up. Say what's up, thank you. Oh, yeah.